The priest tells the story of one of the most grateful persons he'd ever met. It was an old woman in an extended care unit. She had some kind of a wasting disease where her different powers were fading away one by one over the march of the months. A student happened to meet her on a coincidental visit, and the student kept going back, drawn by the strange force of the woman's joy. Though she could no longer move her arms nor her legs, she would say, I'm just so happy and grateful to God that I can move my neck. When she could no longer move her neck, she would say, I'm just so grateful and so thankful that I can hear and see. When the young student finally asked the old woman what would happen if she lost her sense of sound and sight, the gentle lady said, I'll just be so grateful that you come to visit. The attitude of this saintly woman is the attitude that we all need to have. It is the attitude that the Samaritan leper had in the gospel. It is the attitude that Naaman the Syrian had in the first reading. Because in both of these individuals, it's interesting that they were not Israelites. In other words, they were not Jews. Yet, they are the ones who are praised in the readings. And I think it's really rather curious why a Samaritan leper was among the Jewish lepers in the first place. Because remember, there was no love lost between the Samaritans and the Jews. However, the shared pain of the leprosy allowed them to be together and all the racial barriers were removed so that those ten would be always together, not alone, together in their ministry. Min misery. The law of Moses demanded that lepers should live away from other people, and they had to let it be known that they were suffering from this disease so as not to spread the disease to anyone else. And so this explains why they did not come right up to Jesus and his group, but instead the gospel says that they begged his help by shouting from a distance before curing them our Lord orders them to go to the priests and have their cure certified and to perform the ritual cleansing the lepers obedience is a sign of their faith in Jesus's words and soon after setting out, they're immediately cleansed. And in a similar way, Naaman the Syrian, who was an outcast because he was not an Israelite and because he was a leper, went and performed the cleansing in the Jordan, as told by the prophet Elisha. It's interesting that only these two foreigners Two Gentiles, two heretics, had the attitude of gratitude like that old woman in the extended care unit. The nine Jewish lepers went their way under the false impression that healing was their right as God's chosen people. They hurried off to obtain a health certificate from the priests because then they would be allowed back into the community. They would no longer be outcasts from society and they probably 
would not associate with the Samaritan who was cured of the leprosy along with them. But the thanks and the praise of the Samaritan was a natural response to the free and undeserved mercy of God. He did nothing to earn the kindness of God. He simply asked for it, and it was freely given to him. St. Luke, who is telling us this story, was himself a Gentile. He was a foreigner. And so he may be deliberately telling this incident to show how God blesses foreigners, making even a Samaritan a hero in the story. So the lesson is quite clear, I think, for us. We need to learn to be thankful to God and to others. In general, our un we are ungrateful to God. Although we receive everything from Him, we often take it for granted without appreciating His gifts. We are often thankful only when we compare ourselves with less fortunate people. In times of need, we pray with desperate intensity. But as time passes, we forget to thank God when we've received what we asked. God gave us his only son, but we seldom give him a word of thanks. We are ungrateful to our parents and even consider them a nuisance and too strict, especially when we're teenagers, right? We fail to show gratitude to our forgiving God by forgiving others. We fail to show our gratitude to a loving God by radiating his love, his mercy, and compassion to others. How many times do we go to confession and we say we're so sorry and then we do absolutely nothing to change our ways to correct ourselves from the same patterns that lead us into sin? We need to put on an attitude of gratitude in all things. So I suggest you start with the simple, everyday things. Thank mom for fixing a meal. Thank your husband for doing some small task around the yard. Thank your friend for some kind gesture. Thank a teacher for something they may have taught you. You see, the idea is that if we start off small, then we will work up to the more difficult thank yous, like thanking God for some suffering. Did you ever think about that? Thanking God for suffering. Jesus thanked his Father for the cross. That's suffering. And that's where we need to get to. I know I've got a long ways to go yet. But it's through gratitude in suffering that we will truly become more Christ-like. Christian gratitude is a way of living. It is not just a passing thing. Quite often, we live as if we deserve what we have or that we deserve more from an employer than we've received. We tend to think that all that we have, we've earned by our hard work. But the gratitude of the Samaritan is that of one who lives in an entirely different way. Just like that old woman in the extended care facility, the Samaritan lived an attitude of gratitude. May each one of us do the same.
Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe